Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the pacing basics for the SAT math sections. This is also gonna work for the PSAT because it's basically the same thing, and this is gonna work for all the modules that you might see, all the skill levels of students. This is what I do as well. So this is gonna work. Let's go step by step. Step one is seems obvious, start at question number one. Uh, the reason we're doing that is the questions are arranged from easy to hard. It's not perfectly linear, but it is the case that the easier questions are up front and the harder questions are at the end. We wanna do the easy ones first and get as many points as possible without risking any careless mistakes. So you do not wanna start with the hard questions. That's a dumb idea. People ask me about that all the time. Do not do that. Start with question number one. Step two. Work your way to question number 14, and as you do, be very, very careful. You really want to make sure you're getting these questions right. These are the easier ones. There are still going to be some traps and things that kind of throw you off, but you really want to be confident on these questions. If you are skipping questions, even in the hard module before number 14, it probably means you don't know some of the things you're supposed to know. That might be strategies, formulas, vocabulary words. There's lots of stuff that could be causing that. You really want to examine that if that applies to you. But luckily, a lot of points are going to come from just these 14 questions. In order to get a good score on the SAT, if this 14 questions takes you about 20 minutes and you're getting about 75% of them right, even in the hard module, that's a good thing. That's going to still get you a pretty decent score. If you want a top score, though, 700 or better, you basically want to be getting through these first 14 questions in 14 minutes or less, and you need to be 100% accurate, no exceptions, no careless mistakes, nothing. These need to be perfect. Now, step three is going to apply to questions 15 to 22, the hard questions. Basically, you want to make sure you are targeting the easiest questions and topics within this range. So even I do this. I'm really good at math. I only ever get 800s, but I'm still thinking about each question individually and deciding whether I want to commit to answering it or skip it for now. I'm probably going to have time to go back to everything, but I'm still trying to find the easiest questions, the easiest topics, the things that are most likely to get me some points. So every time you flip to a new math question in this set, just take five seconds to look at it and decide, am I going to commit to answering it or am I going to skip it for now? Skip it maybe entirely. The reason we want to make sure that if we do decide to do it, we are committing to it is we don't want to half solve a bunch of questions and end up guessing randomly anyway. If you decide to do it, you got to work your way through. So try to get good at recognizing the questions that you are going to have the best chance of getting right. My main advice for these is look for situations where you can use our favorite math strategy and plug points into equations. And again, this piece of the step, this piece of the process here applies to everyone. I do not care if you're getting 800s on every single math practice test that you've taken. You still need to be thinking about targeting questions that are going to be the most likely to get you points. Hopefully you'll have time for everything, but it doesn't always happen. So that's why step four is with one minute left, if you didn't get to all the questions, if there are some blanks, Go back and guess randomly on those questions. All the ones that you skipped, make sure you answer something. For the ones that are multiple choice, just guess the same letter, pick B, pick C, whatever you like, but do that for all the ones you guess on. If it's one of those student-produced response questions without choices, then just pick a number. It doesn't matter. Whatever your favorite number is, just put that in. It's better than leaving it blank. If this is a practice test, make sure that you bookmark those questions and record those bookmarks somewhere else so that you know, even if you guess right, to go back and see, was that a question you should have skipped? Was it someone you would have worked on? What can you learn from that question? You want to make sure you record the ones that were pure random guesses. And so there you go. That is a summary for the math section strategy for pacing. It is very straightforward. And this is, again, what I do on the test. One little piece of advice, though, is if you are worried about the hard questions, you have to remember success on those hard questions, numbers 15 to 22, is very much determined by your success on number 1 to 14. If you are struggling on those easy and medium ones, you stand no chance of doing well on the hard ones. So think about your timing, your efficiency, your pacing, all that stuff on those easy and medium ones. And especially if you're getting them wrong, you really are jeopardizing a top score just by getting mistakes on the questions that are supposed to be easier. So don't worry about the hard ones. Make sure those easy ones are ready to go. So hopefully this helped. If you have other questions, please put them in the comments. Uh, if it did help, please like and subscribe. I've got tons of other lessons on all the different topics you'll see on SAT math and all the other things for the SAT. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Once again, I am Mike Sattel. And remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less, Sattel for more. Thanks for watching.